everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. Today I've got a couple of cards that are all about creating a welcome. Whether you are welcoming someone to the neighborhood or welcoming someone to, well, adulthood or welcoming someone to raid your liquor cabinet, I got you today. Two clean and simple card projects are coming up next. So here's a look at the stamp set and the die I'm going to use today. This set is called Welcoming, and I designed this to be an all-purpose set of different types of greetings, whether you're welcoming someone home, whether you're welcoming a friend to use your Wi-Fi, raid said liquor cabinet, crash at my place, share your fries, or just welcoming someone to the block, or to adulthood, or to marital bliss, or even to the world. So you can use that for a new baby as well. And I've also got this welcome word and shadow die, but it is not the same size as what you'll find in the stamp set. The stamp set does have coordinating dies that cut out several of the greetings. So that's kind of fun to use if you are a cut out the greeting kind of person. All right. So I'm gonna to paint today with Distress Inks and I'm gonna keep this very simple. This is such an easy technique. You just need a brush and some water and I'm going to be painting on Distress White Heavy Stock, which is this really heavy cardstock from Tim Holtz. It's really nice. It's designed to hold a lot of different things like mediums and water and all that good stuff. I'm just gonna paint, so not loading it up too much, but I'm gonna smush down my inks and all I'm gonna do is create the simplest little rainbow on a piece of, I think this is trim two, four and a quarter tall by five and a half wide. This is so easy. If you are new to painting, you could do this and kick a bunch of these out. I love this as a go-to technique because it's just a nice way to add a little bit of pop behind a die cut. And that's what I'm doing today. Laying down the color, kind of just working in order, having a little bit of overlap. I always end up going back into Twisted Citron and pumping that green up because I love that green. So I'll have to smush down a little more and then come back in and pump it up. And again, you can just pump up color as often as you need to until it looks good to your eye. I'm coming in with some orange as well. And the messier, the better. That's it. One little smushy painted rainbow. Next, I'm gonna cut out the welcome word. I'm gonna run that through my Gemini Junior. I keep this sort of off to the side where I craft. Love this machine. And I'm going to cut these out two more times so that I have a whole series of welcomes to stack. I actually just did a stacking video. Uh, if, if you're new to stacking die cuts, and I'll pop a card up in the upper right for you. So I'm gonna take my spray adhesive. This is my favorite way to stack die cuts. I'm gonna spray this off camera. And once it's coated with that nice layer of adhesive, I'm going to line up layer number two to build up dimension for this greeting. It takes me a little while to get them lined up, but I definitely have gotten faster and I'm getting better at stacking die cuts. Layer number three gives a really nice amount of dimension. If you wanna go all in, you can add a fourth layer. I usually just keep it to three and I'm always happy with the results. So there is my stacked welcome. But for this card, I'm not gonna use the shadow layer. Now I just wanna kinda of play with the greetings and figure out what is gonna be cute on here. And I think this would be nice to have a welcome to the neighborhood. I actually showed this to my husband and he's like, why would you make a card like that? You don't talk to anyone. <laughs> oh, it's kinda of true. But I'm wiping off the coating from manufacturing and I'm just gonna use a little bit of black onyx ink, this little cute from Gina K Designs, inking it up stamping it right down onto the card base. Easy peasy, Zach Parisi. I'll just use my Debbie tool here. This helps me to stamp pain-free and lets me give nice even pressure. I just have bad wrists, yeah, so that tool is awesome. I'm gonna score my card base. This is also from White Cardstock, but this is Nina Solar White Classic Crest, not the Tim Holtz paper. And while I'm here, before I fold it, I thought I'm gonna stamp a greeting on the inside. And so there it is. Welcome to the neighborhood from your new favorite neighbors. And of course, if you were a singular neighbor, you could just mask off the S on that and you're good to go. Give this a nice score. 
And then I've got foam tape on the back of my panel and I'll just pop that right onto the card base. I'm gonna use liquid glue to adhere my stacked die cut. And I like to do the liquid glue because it just has a little more play time, right? You can wiggle it a bit more than you can with spray adhesive. I like to bring in my T-square and just pop that up to make sure that the die cut is perfectly straight on this otherwise simple card. And I will press that down and let it adhere. Isn't that a fun card? It's just, it's such a simple, happy way to take a die cut, right? Put a little color behind it. And what the heck, we're gonna finish it off with a little bit of shine, five silver sequins cascading across the card front. And I think that is a really elegant and simple design that anyone in the neighborhood would like. If I just had the courage to actually <laughs> go put it in there. Oh, I could, I could ding dong ditch, right? Just throw it down, ding dong and run and then I wouldn't have to talk to strangers. That's a win. And then I truly would become their new favorite neighbors. All right, that's card number one. Now I want to do this again, just a little bit differently. This time we're going to do just a simple emboss resist, but it's the same idea. So I'm going to stamp the welcome word right onto this card panel. And again, this is that same heavy stock from Tim Holtz. Give that a good press, get a nice transfer of ink. And then I'm just going to use some Simon Says Stamp Clear Embossing Powder. You can use white for this. You can use any embossing powder actually for this technique because the embossing is going to resist where you paint. So I'll get a nice coating of that on, give it a little more. I usually hit it twice. Is it, is it a good idea? I don't know, I just, it's kind of a habit. Tap off the excess, and now I will get my heat tool hot and melt that powder. It kind of disappears a little, but of course the magic will come when we start painting. Again, same process. I'm gonna pick up the smushed ink and paint it on. It's a little, it was a little light there with the, with the uh, Kitsch Flamingo, so pumping it up a little there and just repeating the rainbow. And the word begins to show because that is the, well, that's the magic of the emboss resist. I've been making cards since 2017 and I didn't know about this technique prior to then. And even now when it happens, I still think, how did I not know about this? This is so cool. Dab it in the paint. And again, just bump up until it looks how you think it should look, and then you can let it dry. Now, I'm actually going to grab a little bit of my refill for Kitsch Flamingo because I thought I wanted it to be a little lighter, and then I accidentally got some paint on the bottom, and I started to, oh, I started to panic, and it got really, really dark. So I watered it down a little more just to pump that up on the side. Those re-inkers are really rich and saturated versions of the color. They also make great painting sources, but live and learn. I think this looks good. Pumping up that Twisted Citron again, and I think we're looking pretty good. I'm gonna take a panel to cut that down so I don't have to worry about that little splotch of ink that I got on there, and I'll run that through my die cut machine, and then set up my next sentiment, right? Get it lined right up onto the panel, and I'll reposition that so I know it's good to go, and I'll ink up these little sentiments and stamp them down. This whole set is designed to work together so the you're always, you know, nestles right in next to the L and right over the last half of welcome and you can add whatever you want in the bottom. But there you go, sending this to a friend, you're welcome to raid my liquor cabinet. I'm not really spending much time drinking out of it, so you know, if, you're welcome. You're welcome to come over and do that because I, uh, yeah, I'm not really a hard liquor kind of girl. So. Now, if there was wine in there, that's a different story. All right, putting tape all over the back, which helps flatten it out, pressing that down with my Teflon bone folder, and we have card number two. So simple, but again, the emboss resist, but that same little painted background. It's such a fun technique, it's so easy to do. You could, you could knock out a bunch of these at once, make rainbows, make partial rainbows, whatever you're feeling, right? But then all you have to do is put a greeting on or stamp and emboss resist a greeting for a fantastic card to add a welcoming gesture to someone you love or neighbors that you don't know yet. Anyway, hope you liked those cards. I think this sentiment set is actually really versatile because it can be used for multiple different themes all about welcoming. You're welcome. 
Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.